Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Laura of Laura Plans It, and today I am talking to you about how I use the Moxie Life Goal Setting Planner as a behavioral login journal for my eight-year-old son who has a little bit of difficulty when it comes to executive functioning skills. Okay, so I'm gonna splice over in just a minute to show you the actual inside of my planner. But what I wanted to talk to you about first before I did that was why we use the Moxie Life Planner. So I was fortunate enough when I spoke with Sierra, who is the creator of Moxie Life, to be given one of these. So this this was a, a gift, we'll call it. This was something that she believed in what I was doing. She wanted to send this to me so that I could use this for that purpose. So this was given to me so that I can try it out. And I truly am so grateful for it because I don't think any other planner would have worked right for what we're doing. And you'll see in just a minute why. But I wanted to have a way that I can track daily behaviors without needing a daily planner, to be honest. And that was really hard to do. And I also needed notes pages. And I wanted my son to be able to set some, some therapy goals for himself as well as know what his therapy goals are that the therapist and I set for him. So this planner has really worked out for us. So I want you to go ahead and take a look at how I use it and I will see you when I'm done explaining it. Okay, so if you've been following for a while, you know that my Moxie Life Planner is actually used as a behavioral log for my son, Jake. He has some executive functioning difficulties and we are working on pinpointing what those difficulties are, what his triggers are and recording his therapies to make sure that we are seeing what does and doesn't work appropriately so that we can adjust as needed. So the inside of this planner is pretty standard and typical. And in fact, I'm gonna to flip to the beginning. So here, I mean, it's just my name. Here is April, it shows a monthly spread. And I'm only showing you April because I've already filled out January. So I wanna show you what it looks like filled out, but I wanna show you a blank one first. So here's the monthly spread. We can set up monthly goals, which I do with my son. You've got weekly actions, notes and reflections, and then the actual weekly spread, which I have chosen horizontal, okay? If you'd like a full walkthrough of this, you can click the link right up here. That'll bring you to my Moxie Life walkthrough video. You can also see, if you're looking for a goal setting planner, you can see my comparison video here for Moxie Life versus the power sheets, but that's not how I'm using this. So I wanted to show you what it looks like really quick and how I am actually using this for our behavioral goal setting. So here is January so far. It is not super filled in right now because we are not through January yet. But I wanna show you just how we're tracking things. So to give you an idea of what this is, first, I use a system, an anger system. It's a scale of one to five, but basically like a stoplight. Green is good, red is bad, yellow and orange in the middle trying to get me down between them all, okay? I use these small stickers from Knockout Print Shop. I'm gonna link them in the description below to track how our days are going. Unfortunately, I forgot to add green ones to my shopping cart or what probably happened is I added them in a different like set. Like I probably had, oh, flags and decided I wanted circles instead. Took out the flags, forgot to put the circles, right? So I'm using Planner Kate transparent dots, which is why the color changes here. Um, but I'm using the knockout print shop dots. I like them best. They're nice and small. They very easily fit across. I've got a whole bunch more on the way. I'm really excited. And I'm following through with what the behavior is looking like. So you can see most of this behavior is greens and light yellows, which is good. If the behavior gets below dark yellow into the light orange, which you can see a couple of those here. This is dark orange. This is dark yellow. Here's light yellow or light orange there, there. That's light light red and then dark red is obviously where we don't wanna be. When the behavior stays above yellow, generally that's very good. You know, he's eight years old, he's almost nine. It's okay to have bad days, bad moments, you know, where he's upset, where he's sad, whatever. Yellow, it's not affecting anybody but himself at that point. He's not hurting anyone, he's not hurting himself, he's not, it's just typical, you know, eight-year-old behavior, but it's not perfect green. So I do track that just so we know the fluctuations. Orange is where he's starting to lose control. He is starting to have difficulty with his functioning. And then red, of course, is where all control is lost and we, we end up having 
interventions that need to, like severe interventions that need to take place. So you can see there's only really three spots where there's red and they really aren't that bad looking back at them. This one was our worst where the red lasted for almost an hour and a half and we really had a long time with intervention there. You can also see that we've got some other notes in here. So first, these green boxes are, here. well, these were all sick days, but we were all behaving because we were all sick and couldn't move. These are here because I didn't have enough green dots, but everything has been perfectly fine since then. I have our visit to my in-law's house for my daughter's birthday. I've marked off with, again, this is knockout print shop. This was just a solid box in the, I think this is the light blue gray. And I just, I kept putting the boxes next to each other and cut them down to fit. And I did not record his behavior that week, although I will tell you it was very good. And the reason I didn't record it is because I didn't think it was necessary to bring all of this. I wanted him and myself to have a vacation. So, um, and then I also put in anything that I thought might be a major trigger. So um, this was the first day his dad went back to work after the holidays, then he had this day off. So you could see he had a really rough spot in the afternoon because dad was gone, but he was really good the whole next day, minus a little bit in the morning, which again was yellow, so nothing we're concerned about. Um, my daughter's birthday party, he worked so hard to have the focus be on her, and by the time he got home, I think he was just tired and snapped a tiny bit, but he was fine again. I have in here as well these mini flags that I'm using to mark down music. I find that the days that Jake does music, he is typically happier and does better. These classes for music on Thursdays are in the evenings. So um, you can see he was really rough that day and then it got yellow and then back to green again by, to, by the time we went to music. He usually does very well on music days, but this is so that I can track that to see if there is any kind of correlation between music and mood other than what I see and think in my brain. Because um, I think visuals are very important, okay? So we've got the flags to mark his music days. He does music twice a week. I have this scallop circle here, and that's to mark his therapy days, which currently is just once a week on Wednesdays. And you can see he was doing really, his therapy is first thing in the morning. So you can see he was doing really well here. This is the day before we left. We got home later that afternoon and he was really having a hard time. Um, so some days with therapy, it is very mentally exhausting and he doesn't do so great. Other days he does just fine. And then lastly, I have right here, these are like little medicine pill ones. And these I believe are the light blue color again from Knockout Print Shop because they, Knockout Print Shop stickers all coordinate with the Moxie Life, which is why I use them in here. I love when things match. And, and I'm sure if you follow me on Instagram, guys, I like post about that once a week. Oh, look at all my stuff matching. Because truly I do, I love when it matches. But you can see that anytime that you see this box here, that means on the weekly spread, there's a note about medicine. So whether he didn't take it that day, he took it late, we changed the dosage, anything like that would be put in on those days. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you kind of our monthly goals. So the monthly goals, we work together and set them. He did not have a personal goal this month. We really didn't talk too much about what goals meant because it was the holidays and we were coming back from vacation and we just kind of wanted to get a couple ideas in here. So we put some things in here that he really wants to do that I'd like him to try to do and we kind of work together on this. So finishing all of his schoolwork on time, taking meaningful pictures. He, he said that he was taking over 100 pictures on his new camera every day and most of them were any good. So I said, well, let's try to take more meaningful pictures. Take your time, think it through, which will help him develop his executive functioning skills and work on his impulsivity. Spending more one-on-one -on -one time with his mom and dad, which is obviously me and my husband, <laughs> but spending more one-on-one -on -one time, he very much feels like he doesn't get enough of that, so he'd like more. So we're gonna work on giving him as much as we can within our family limits. And then health and wellness, brushing his teeth and drinking more water. He's not great at hydrating, so we gotta work on that. I'd like him to try something new, like a new hobby or a new food every week. Um, he's been really good about that. He likes to try new things if he's in a good mood. So um, we also started allowance. So for the month of January, we're looking on how to save. So he's got a ledger book that was well, a piece of paper, but a ledger where he writes down every time he gets allowance added and how, how much is going in. So he knows what his running total is. And we'll do that for a few months to get him used to that before we start adding extra steps and then tidy his bedroom every day. So I ask him to spend 15 minutes in his room just picking up. And those are our monthly goals. And some of these goals will stick with us for a few months, some of them not so much. 
Here is an example of our weekly goal. So brushing his teeth and drinking more water. Um, my husband tried, tried a new recipe, so that was his new thing for the week. Setting up his allowance, this is our first week, so this is setting up the jars and savings and spending 15 minutes each day doing a reset in the evenings, so just making sure his room's picked up before he goes to sleep. Um, he got to go see the new Star Wars movie with his dad, so that was something he did quality time with his dad. And there was no school, so he had no school goals. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip open to a week that I can walk you through what a general week looks like in here. I wanna find a week that doesn't have a whole lot of personal information about Jake because I do wanna protect his privacy. So I'm gonna do that and I will be right back. Okay, so it actually turns out the first week of January is a great week to use as an example. This is a very standard week for us. You can see that I've got some water trackers at the bottom, which I have changed how I've tracked water every week in here. This was way too big and took up too much of my, my space. I did a stamp the week after that, and honestly, I just, I don't like stamping in my planner. It's just, it's stressful, man. And then this past week, I think I drew in the water drops, and one week I didn't track it at all because we were all so sick. So I've got his breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm tracking on the sides. Here is an example of a medical note. We took his medicines late, so I've written that in here. And I've put this sticker, which if you look back at the January spread, so this would be January 1st, you'll see the first has that um, medicine box there so that I know there's a medical note. I have written down what his behavior was like that day. I have written down how much water he's drank on those days. This red dot here indicates that this was when we had a major issue that we went ahead and took care of. Um, so that I know, okay, so here's the 4th of January. You go over here to the 4th, you can see there's the red dot. Let's see what that red dot was. And boom, it's right there. I can look at it and reference it very easily. Um, another medical note for the 5th, we ran out of one of his evening medicines, so he wasn't taking that for a while as well. Um, so these are the kinds of things that we keep in here. I also highlight things like, for example, he used to have the dog in his room when my husband was deployed. The dog is an elderly dog now. He is ill and often needs to go out multiple times in the evening. And so he can't be in my son's room because nothing wakes my son up once he's asleep. And for the first time in probably about three months, Jake asked for the dog back. So I highlighted that because I thought that was really important and I thought that the uh, provider might need to see that. I've got his habits and tracker right here and this coordinates beautifully with the weekly goals. And then I have on the notes page, on the next page, and give me one second here, I'm just gonna flip straight to it. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter, these are our goals. The notes page really breaks down an overall look at our week. So overall, Jake was great. You know, he using the monthly visual shows that while he does struggle, generally he exceeds more often than not. And I elaborate on anything else that I am concerned about. You know, the, the coming week is full of transitions. Chris is back at work. Lily is at preschool. Jake has school on three of the days. And then Thursday we leave for a vacation. So um, I mentioned that that would be a challenge, but I'm hoping that it wouldn't be so bad. And then I wrote down again our goals for that week. And I've been repeating this over and over again. One of the things that I want to note that I was just so excited about, and I've shared about this on my Instagram, which is at Laura Plans It, if you haven't already bump, bumped over there and checked it out, I do share about this in here as often as I can. But one of the really cool things that I like about this is that actually on Monday the 20th, um, which again, everything's been green. I'm just out of green stickers, so I'm waiting for my order to arrive. But on Monday the 20th, we went in and met with this therapist as a family. My husband had the day off and he has not met her yet. And I was able to hand her this book and say, you can see the good days, you can see the bad days. I showed her how to flip to the pages so she can look at it. And she was able to look at it. It took her maybe five, 10 minutes to find the things that she wanted to see, look for the things that she needed. And we were able to have a very in-depth, intelligent conversation about my son's behavioral goals and his plans and what we're gonna be working on over the next few weeks. And I love that we were able to do that. So if you have a child who struggles, uh, whether it be a behavioral, issue, which is what I'm dealing with, or even a physical issue of some kind, um, but particularly behavioral because that's what I'm learning and understanding at this time, this planner has been just amazing for us. And, and so I really wanted to show you how I've got it set up. Um, I did talk to my son about that and he's very happy to be able to share this with you guys as well. I think especially seeing all the green, all the green, which this should all be green here too, has made a huge difference for him as well. But the fact that I can fill this out easily without issue, I can share it with the therapist very quickly and she can quickly reference it and let me know what's going on. 
all of that makes a humongous difference in his tracking and therapies. And, it, and it's helped my husband and myself as well because we can see just what's going on. Okay, so thank you so much for watching my video on how I use the Moxie Life Planner. I really hope that it was educational or helpful to you. If you have a child that struggles with behavioral issues, no matter how big or small they are, I think it's really important that you be the voice and the advocate for your child. And that is, that's what I'm using the Moxie Life Planner for, so that I can be his advocate, I can be his voice, and also so that I can show him and myself and my husband and the therapist just where he is on that scale um, that I mentioned before from red to green. You know, how, how many moments are bad? It's truly not nearly as many as I think everybody thinks they are because I think bad moments stick with us a little bit longer. So it's more positive reinforcement of how many good things are actually happening. So I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you have a behavioral health child that needs support, I highly recommend the Moxie Life Planner. I know I'm not using it as it is intended to be used, but it truly is the best possible option for our family and I'm so grateful that I have it. If you like this video, please hit like. If you'd like to see more updates on how I'm using the Moxie Life Planner as a behavior log for my son, I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel. If you tap that bell, that'll turn on notifications so you're always alerted when a new video comes out. And of course, for behind the scenes sneak peeks and what I'm doing right now, head on over to my Instagram at Laura Plans It. Thanks so much for watching.